Hi guys, I've got a, another video review for you today, um, and today we're going to be taking a look at this. It's the Hollyland Mars 400S, and it's a wireless video transmission unit. Um, now, full disclosure, this was sent to me to review by Hollyland Technology, um, so a massive thank you to them for sending this over, and I do get to keep this unit once I'm finished, so it's technically a sponsored review. But without further ado, let's get stuck in and find out a little bit more about it, shall we? So let's start off with what you get in the box. You obviously get the transmitter unit, but you also get a receiver. You get five antenna, so there's two for each unit and then one spare. And then you get a mains plug that's got US, EU and UK adapters. So you've pretty much got everything you need to set it up and run straight out of the box. So the Mars 400S is an upgrade to the Mars 300. Um, and the main differences are the improved line of sight range of the unit, which is up to 400 feet from 300. Um, and then you've got SDI as well as HDMI, whereas with the 300 you just have HDMI. One thing to bear in mind is that range is line of sight, so if you're going through walls, that is going to affect the distance and you're going to get less range the more walls you're needing to go through. In terms of build quality and external features, it's an aluminium construction um, for both the transmitter and the receiver, and they both look pretty much identical. They've got the same ports. The antenna just screw into the top of the unit. We've got this front LCD display um, with these three buttons for navigating the menus. On the, the side here, we've got the on-off switch and the DC power port for running mains or from a DTAP port on a battery. On the other side of the unit, we've got a USB Type-C port, which is for firmware upgrades. We've then got HDMI in and um, SDI in, so you've, it's nice to have both the option for HDMI and SDI. And then on the receiver unit, it's pretty much exactly the same, except we've got HDMI out and SDI out. I'm going to walk you guys now through the menus on the Hollyland Mars 400S uh, receiver and transmitter. We're going to start off with the transmitter and then move over to the receiver. There is one very slight difference between the menus, but all that will become clear shortly. Um, to navigate the menus and actually enter them, it's exactly the same process. So we've got this central button here on the front of both the transmitter and the receiver. And if we press and hold that for about a second, the menus load up. So on the transmitter unit, we have the following options. We've got scene mode, system settings, and version info. Um, to navigate, you've got these two side buttons, and they both scroll in both directions, as you can see. Um, and then to enter the submenu, you press the center button. So if we enter scene mode first, here is where we choose the balance between speed of transmission, so latency and image quality. Um, so image mode prioritizes image quality and speed mode prioritizes um, lack of latency. So the, it's just transmitted at a faster rate, so there's less delay. Um, but balance mode is, I think, the best option and it works really well. And you still get a really nice quality image, but then you've still got the speed and lack of latency, so it's not causing any issues. So I usually just leave it in balanced mode. So if we come out of system mode, we've got our system settings. Um, which are limited to language and pair. Language is really self-explanatory. It changes the language of the system. Um, and pair is a manual pairing option, which means so if, if you're struggling to connect both units, you can manually pair them to each other um, by hitting pair on both the transmitter and the receiver, um, and they will find each other. I've never been in a situation on set where I've had to manually pair them. It's always been a case of, I've turned the units on and they've found each other straight away. So I've never had to go through that, but it's quite an easy process. The final thing on the uh, menu is the version info. And this is where you can see which firmware version you're on. Here we are with the receiver. Um, and as I said, it's basically the same menu system as the transmitter, apart from one difference. So we enter it in exactly the same way. We navigate in exactly the same way. But the top option we have is this channel scan mode which is really useful because if we enter that, it will scan the area and see which channels are the ones with the least interference and which are gonna be the best to use. So as you can see, it's an eight channel system. 
and it's saying all the channels except for channel one are in the area I'm in at the moment, going to be safe to use and no interference and work really well. So it's suggesting we don't use channel one. Um, and if you're struggling to connect or you keep losing signal, it's best to use this channel scan because then you can see which channels to avoid and which ones are going to be good to use. So that's a really useful feature and that's only on the receiver. The transmitter doesn't have that, but it does have that, um, that picture speed versus quality setting. Um, picture mode, I think it was called. So that th there's two sort of really useful features on both the units. One thing to note as well is on the back of the unit we have a Sony L-series battery plate. So you can run quite a compact battery and still get a good few hours of usage, especially if you're using one of the bigger MPF batteries like this one here. You're going to get pretty much whole day on one of those. There's also this QR code on the transmitter. Um, and we'll talk about that later because that's for the very useful Hollyview app and the sort of Wi-Fi viewing features that that has. From a single transmitter unit, you can run up to two receivers. Now, you only get one in the box, but you have the option to buy a second receiver. And then there's, the also, there's also the Hollyview mobile app, which is available on both Android and iOS. And it's a Wi-Fi control app for the unit that you can actually, as well as transmitting to two receivers at once, you can also send picture to four mobile devices using the Hollyview app. And there's a bunch of great features built into that app that just make it super versatile and useful on set. So I want to talk you guys through the Hollyland um, Hollyview mobile app. Um, that is free to download and is available on both iOS and Android. And it's actually a really useful app and it's got a lot of great features. Um, so you basically pair it with the transmitter unit and it will transmit the image the transmitter is receiving from the camera over Wi-Fi to any device. So whether it be a phone or a tablet, you can have picture on whatever device you want, whether it runs iOS or Android, which is really useful. Um, and the app has a bunch of great built-in features. It's got this lock function here. If I tap, then I can't actually enable anything on the screen. But we want to unlock for now because I want to show you the different features we've got. So down the bottom here, if you tap the screen, it will disappear. Tap it again, it will reappear. We've got stuff like viewfinder, sorry, waveform. Um, we've also got a histogram. We've got focus peaking, um, zebra, frame guide, magnify, false color, monochrome and 3D LUT. So we've got a bunch of different features and for each of these features if you press and hold them a little sub menu will come up where you can customize them and change the properties of each of the features. So for instance I've now got the peaking in yellow. I can also turn down the intensity of the peaking or turn it up. Um, if we disable that we've got the zebra we can also change the intensity of that. The frame guide we can reset to different aspect ratios and colors. We've then got a magnify tool, which is a really useful tool to have, and you can just drag it around the screen and magnify any part of the image you want. We've got a built-in false color, which is great for nailing exposure. We've got a monochrome profile, which will do red channel, blue channel, or green channel in monochrome, but also black and white or grayscale, which is really useful for nailing focus sometimes. We've also got 3D LUT. And we've actually got three LUTs built into the app already that come with it when you download it. Um, we've got Canon C-Log, Sony S-Log and Sony S-Log 2. But you can add any LUT file you want. So for instance, I could add a Blackmagic LUT or a Kinefinity LUT or a custom creative LUT. Whatever you want to add to it, you're able to. We've also got two other really useful features. We've got this screenshot feature, which if I press it correctly, it takes a photo. Um, and then we can actually draw in three different colors, yellow, blue, or red, in different sizes over the image to make notes. If we go back from that, we go return. There is also a uh, video recording feature. So if, say, you're a continuity supervisor or script supervisor, and you're on set, and you've got a tablet like iPad Pro or whatever with this app on, you press record, it's going to record the take. So if I, I'm going to step away from the camera and wave my hand in front of the camera that's transmitting, and it's going to, it, you should be able to hear me okay, but it's going to record that on the take. Um, so now we've got that, you can see what's happened in the take, we've got that recorded on the app, and it's instantly going to play back for us. 
So if, if something changed in terms of costume or continuity, you can instantly watch that take back um, without having to go through camera for playback. So that's a really useful feature to have for like makeup or continuity. Um, and that saves directly to your phone, so you've got that forever. And it's, it's just a really simple and effective app, and it works really well. The latency as well is, is perfectly reasonable. I wouldn't suggest we, we focus pull from the app. But I mean, if you wanted to, you have the ability to do so because you've got stuff like focus peaking and, and monochrome. So in a pinch, you, you could focus pull just using the app. Um, so it's just another way that this product is super versatile. So one of the big questions I get about this unit is latency. How bad is it? And honestly, not bad at all. Considering this unit only costs $649, um, the latency is impressive. Let's get into this very non-scientific test that I'm going to run. Um, I'll run you through the setup and then we'll get into the results a little bit later on. So I've got the Mars 400S here with my Kinefinity Mavo LF and I've connected the transmitter via SDI to the camera and that is pointing at my Amazon Fire tablet which I'm going to run a stopwatch on. Then the transmitter is sending its signal over here to the receiver, which is connected again via SDI, but to my Shogun Inferno monitor. And we're gonna capture what the Shogun Inferno sees using my GH5 here. Um, and I'm gonna run a stopwatch on the tablet and take the footage from both the Mavo and the GH5, drop those into the Resolve and see sort of how many milliseconds delay we've got from this system. I'll also run a test in a minute with the phone app to see what the delay is like over Wi-Fi. Um, let's see what happens. Now, as you can see from my test, there is a little bit of visible latency. I don't think it's bad enough to not make it possible to focus pull with this system or rely on it, um, but it certainly is there, and it's certainly worse over HDMI than it is SDI. Um, but then the Wi-Fi app as well is actually really surprisingly good um, considering it's transmitting via Wi-Fi. The lack of latency is surprising. All in all, I think there aren't many units on the market that do everything that the Hollyland Mars 400S can do and especially for its price point of 649 I think it's really competitive and it's got a great set of features and it's a great build quality and great image quality and it just works really well. Pairing it up with the receiver on set is pretty much instant. I've never had to manually pair the two units, I've always just turned them on and they've worked just instantly. There's never been any faffing about trying to get it to work or like, oh, why don't we have picture? Um, I remember picture went down once because the battery died on the receiver unit um, and we put a fresh battery on and it picked it up straight away and we were back up and running. And then there was another time battery died on the receiver again um, on a different shoot and picture didn't come back for whatever reason, but there was quite a lot of interference in the area, so we did just power cycle both the units, and then we were back up within a couple of minutes. So it's, you know, very, very minor, and it always manages to find the unit, and I've never really had any trouble with it connecting. Um, so it's very impressive in that sense, that it's just so easy to work with, um, and the app is fantastic. I really can't fault the app. It's just such a useful thing to have. And I'm just really impressed that they've managed to fit so many features into such a compact, lightweight and versatile package. And I highly recommend you guys pick one of these up if you're in the market for wireless video that doesn't break the bank. So that's all I've got for this video, guys. I hope that was useful. Thank you for tuning in. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one, guys.